Good morning. It is Friday, December 18th, 2015. This is your morning edition on I-24 News. Coming up later today, Israel and Turkey reach a preliminary understanding and reconciliation and restoring diplomatic ties, and that all after five years of a deadlock. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu approves a controversial natural gas deal. Opponents pledged to fight him in the country's high court. And later on the show, a roundup of the top environmental news you need to know to keep this planet alive. Good morning, I'm Yael and we begin with Turkey and Israel reached an understanding. Just three days after President Erdogan signaled a possible warming of ties with Israel, saying that the entire region has much to gain from normalized relations, details emerge of a new memorandum of understandings on the basis of which the two states can restore full diplomatic ties. Formulated in a secret meeting held in Switzerland by Israel's incoming Mossad chief and a senior official in the Turkish Foreign Ministry, the agreement paves the way for a strategic reconciliation between the states, ending a five-year standoff. Now, relations between Jerusalem and Ankara broke down following an Israeli naval raid on the Gaza-bound Mavi Marmara flotilla, which led to the death of nine Turkish citizens, some, something Israel had apologized for back in 2013. We're going to hear about the fine details of the understandings in just a moment, but one glaring omission is any reference to Turkey's demand that Israel remove its naval blockade of Gaza, a demand that in the past was the largest obstacle to warming ties between the two countries. Now, the new details emerge as Ankara faces economic sanctions from Russia after it shot down one of its planes carrying out a mission in Syria last month and amid a warming of ties to the EU following a signaling of the migrant absorption deal. To learn more about what this means, this information that came out actually late last night, I'm joined in studio by I-24 News diplomatic correspondent Tal Shalev. Good morning to you. With us also, Professor Dror Zaevi from the Department of Middle Eastern Studies at Hebrew University and also the Forum of Regional Thinking. Good morning. Tal, I want to start with you. What do we know at this point? Well, we know uh, um, a series of, uh, we know that there was a secret meeting. We know that there was, at, at least from the Israeli side, um, we're t uh, trying to project a dramatic breakthrough. We're not there yet. This is just a preliminary, under just preliminary understandings. But it seems like uh, most of the outstanding issues have been resolved. Besides that topic of Gaza, which right. uh, um, we are still waiting to hear what will come out of the Turkish side, because the briefing um, yesterday came out of the Israeli side. So of course it has been stressing what is good for Israel, and uh, at least from the framework that the Israeli that the Israeli Prime Minister's office presented last night, it seems like Israel has significant gains. And, and we can look at the, I mean, the outline of the Israeli-Turkey reconciliation agreement, what we know thus far, and once again, this is a leaked bit of information, correct? The ambassadors will be returned to their respective embassies. Israel will complete, will compensate the families of the victims. All charges against Israeli soldiers who are on the Marmara will be That dropped. was a demand yeah. uh, that uh, Israel has been demanding and was a condition that Israel was demanding in the past two and a half years. We should say these negotiations have been going on since March 2013, since Netanyahu apologized publicly uh, in front of uh, um, to Erdogan uh, following uh, the uh, visit of uh, President Barack Obama here in Israel. Right. Um, and the other, if, uh, if we can get back to the conditions, right. um, the other new um, clause we see here is the one that has to do with uh, Hamas, uh, uh, the Hamas activity right. and Salah Haruri. Uh, the uh, top Hamas operative, their activities in Turkey. That has been a new demand that Israel has actually added in the past year since Operation Protective Edge last year. But of course, there's a big question of where is Gaza and what about the demand? Er Erdogan is on the record demanding that the siege of uh, siege on Gaza will be lifted as a condition for reconciliation. So it's interesting. We do not yet know what happened to that demand and if it is still and on the table. If it's still on the table, and one thing is 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 mostly likely it's not not something Israel will capitulate to, is it? Well, we might see some kind of, I, I would say, um, they, that they try to, feed, try to find a common ground on this. It might be enough not to just lift the siege, but to open up, um, to open up in a way to uh, Turkish imports into Gaza through the sea. It's interesting to see how they will overcome this uh, the, the, this the, gap, but this gap still exists. Still exists. And Professor Zarevi, cue you in, because this to me is fascinating, that Erdogan all of a sudden has turned a corner and feels that it is the right time to create, to go back to relationships diplomatic relations with Israel. 
Does that stem from the fact that, I mean, we heard Putin yesterday <clears throat> say that the Russian plane was shot down by the Turks because they wanted to destabilize the, the relations with the United States. Is Erdogan feeling at this point in time that he needs to, should I put it, kowtow to the West and is doing it because of that in your mind? I don't think that's the main motivation. I mean, first of all, th this agreement has been in the making for a long time, so it's not something that's born out of this uh, sense of seclusion or, okay. or the problems that Turkey is facing right now. But I think that was a, an added uh, impetus to the, to the agreement. Right. But I do think that Turkey is feeling secluded, is feeling uh, alone in the region, you know, it has actually destroyed uh, relationships with all its neighbors, and I think Israel is one one uh, one state close by that they can renew relations with, and probably there is the the American uh, dimension to it, but I think it's mainly uh, the sense of isolation and the fact that um, that Turkey might lose its gas coming from Turkey, if coming, coming from, from Russia, Russia, coming from Russia, and then really? you know, and, and, it's, and, it's, then, it's, and it's then, Israel apropos the gas reserves. Well, that's that's definitely one of the things that it comes into mind when you think about this. I mean, Turkey receives its gas; it doesn't have much of its own energy. It right. receives most of its gas from Russia and from Iran. It has bad relations with Iran. It has bad relations with Russia. It needs another source of energy, and Israel is the natural alternative. So that that also comes into play here. Comes into and play. That have definitely been the incentive that has been put, um, uh, that has been enhancing the pressure on Netanyahu to clo to to move closer to Turkey. Um, the energy minister uh, Yuval Steinitz in the past few weeks on the record has been saying that Israel needs to that Turkey can be Israel's biggest customer uh, for for Israel's natural gas reserves. Right. So gas does play a significant uh, role here, but another um, another uh, geopolitical um, scenario that has been happening is also that Israel has been getting very close to Greece and Cyprus, so it'll be interesting to see how exactly will this reconciliation with Turkey, how will it, how will it impact that new regional alliance that Israel is trying to create Apropos with, uh, its gas reserves with and Greece and, with uh, Greece. Uh, and, uh, Greece and, uh, and, and Cyprus. Cyprus. And last one to you, Professor Zevi, the rhetoric that Erdogan has been using over the course of the last several years, if not, you know, most of his regime, the anti-Israel rhetoric, you know, the promises to only return after blockade of Gaza is lifted. Is that something that he can flip to the people of Turkey? A little bit difficult, but and, and by the way, I think there must be some kind of secret annex. There's there's a decoupling of the the Gaza issue from right. the other issues that they're talking about. But there, I'm sure there's some talk about Gaza there, in the agreement, and it will come to light in a few weeks or months. But uh, I think. Now, first of all, Erdogan feels secure. He has his 50 percent of, uh, of the vote in the last elections, so he's on his, on his throne. He, he's not feeling as, 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 sure. as threatened as he was before. And I think uh, uh, renewing relations with Israel is something he'd flip to his, to his people in that kind of situation. In that kind of sense. Professor Zerv, I want to thank you for joining us this morning as we move along.